Hi, this is George from Point Blank Range, and I'm going to be shooting today one of my favorite guns. This is one of my personal guns. This is a Springfield 1911 GI model. Let's see how it shoots. Okay, we are clear. And on safe. The 1911 is a very old design. It goes back over 100 years ago, back uh, to 1907, where it entered into military trials for the U.S. Army uh, up against a uh, 45 caliber Luger and a semi auto pistol from Savage. Now, this is a great shooting gun. And uh, I just can't recommend them highly enough. I just love these guns. This Springfield has been with me for a number of years, a long time. I've got a lot of rounds through it. You can see it's looking a little rough. But uh, the gun really has a reputation for being, uh, you know, not a good choice for self-defense anymore. But uh, let's go talk about this for a minute and uh, go over some of the things about it, some of the misconceptions. One of the things is that they're inaccurate. Well, that's pretty dang accurate. And modern 1911s have better sights, so you're able, you know, you're able to get even more accuracy out of them. That they're complicated. They're difficult to take apart to maintain. That's not true. It comes down to a lack of familiarization. Everybody's wanting that really simplistic gun like a Glock or a, a Smith & Wesson M&P, and they say that makes it better for self-defense. Well, let's go over this and... Uh, and show you that it's not as complicated as it seems. Let's go to my office. Okay, now that we're done shooting it, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and clean it. And we're going to show you that this is not a very complicated firearm. It's got, it's got two extra parts that other uh, pistols, common pistols like Glocks and XDs uh, and M&Ps don't have, uh, namely a bushing and a uh, spring cap. But let's take a look at this. So we're clear. We're going to take it apart. And to take it apart, uh, what I like to first do is put it on safe. Because that's going to lock the slide and keep that slide from moving as I put pressure on it up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to depress the spring cap. And then we're going to rotate the barrel bushing out of the way. Now this is a part where you can very easily shoot that spring cap across the room. So what I like to do when I get to this point is move my hand up over it to make sure nothing gets out of the way. And we're going to pull that right off. That's just going to slide right out and we're going to take that spring out. And the spring has a flat end and uh, end with the uh, open coil. And I like to keep that part under the cap. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to rotate that barrel bushing out of the way again over here and we're just going to lift it straight out just like that. Now at this point we can see what that barrel bushing does is it helps keep that barrel nice and centered in the slide. So we're going to go and take that off safe and we're going to back that slide back to where the takedown notch lines up with the pin and then we can push that pin out from the other side. Let's do that right here. See that button right there? A lot of times we call it the idiot button because this is where you keep your finger up away from the trigger so that you don't do something an idiot would do. So we're going to push that button in. That allows us to pull that pin right on out. And now we can take that slide off. And we'll set that frame down right here. Now from this point, we've got that slide guide rod right here. We're going to take that off, set that aside, 
And now we've got the barrel, we're going to take the barrel out. To do that, you need to push that link forward. Unlock the barrel from the slide, and then we can slide it right out, just like that. Now this is how this mechanism works. What allows it to tilt and untilt in the frame is that little link. We're going to put that link back here and we can put that slide pin right through there and we can see that when that when the barrel and slide moves together it's in the battery and now it's unlocked from the slide ready to be reloaded so very simple little mechanism a lot hinges on that little link so we're going to take this part take that back out Okay. Now, another thing that uh, we notice on the 1911 is that the frame rails uh, are very long, so you've got a nice solid foundation for that gun to, for a slide to operate on. That stability really helps lend a lot to the accuracy. Another thing that lends a lot to the accuracy, what I mentioned before, is this barrel bushing. Now the barrel bushing has a little tooth on the outside of the bushing here that lines up with a groove on the inside of the slide, which is what allows us to lock that into place so it's nice and solid. Now with that in place, uh, it helps that barrel be centered. So that's a, 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 a good factor in the accuracy. The other thing that's a factor in the accuracy is the way that the, the barrel locks up inside the slide. We can see inside there a lot of uh, some grooves that matches these lugs on the top of the barrel. And that's how that barrel locks and unlocks. And when the barrel and the slide move back, that link allows it to rotate and kind of rotate down. And that pulls the these uh, blocks out of the grooves to let it lock and unlock. So this is a very simple mechanism. And like I said, you know, this goes back over a hundred years and uh, it can be uh, uh, a little a little bit uh, uh, to learn, you know, more than a Glock, but it's, it's really not all that complicated. The complicated bit uh, gets into what most users will never have to worry about, which is the uh, uh, sear uh, mechanism uh, underneath the safety in here in the frame and we really don't have to worry about that for the uh, most users we have a gunsmith in both point blank range locations so uh, if there's anything that has to be taken care of we can take care of that for you underneath there most users do not have to worry about that to reassemble this pistol it's very simple we're going to put that barrel back in again make sure that the link is forward so it fits in here and it locks into place just like that. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lift that link up and I'm gonna hold this right here and I'll put that right there. And then with my thumb to keep it in position, I'm gonna slide this right back onto the frame rail. Just like that. Now I'm gonna come back all the way and when, I come, when it comes back all the way, it helps me position the pin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it forward like that just to hold that barrel link in place. Now I'm going to position that notch right above where my takedown pin is going to be. So be very careful not to scratch your frame or slide. So I'm going to kind of lift it and rotate it into position and then snap it into place thusly. Now pull that forward. And since I'm gonna be putting pressure back on the slide, I'm gonna put it back on safe again, because that locks the slide. So now with that in position, like thus, I'm gonna put that barrel bushing right back here. Okay, and once it's on there, then I can rotate it over here. So it's completely out of the way, so I can put that spring back in. So we're going to put that spring back in. 
And that goes right over the guide rod that's inside there. And then the cap. Again, this is where you could really easily shoot it across the room. So we're going to push it down and rotate it into position like that. And there we go. Now we're going to function check it. And to function check a 1911, first thing we're going to do, I'm going to take it back off safe. And I'm going to rack that slide back a few times to make sure it feels like it's operating the way it should be. Now I'm going to put it back on safe. And I'm going to pull the trigger to make sure that the hammer does not go forward. And we can see that the hammer does not go forward. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my hand away from the beaver tail grip safety and I'm going to pull the trigger again. Okay. That's working. I'm going to take it off safe and I'm going to pull the trigger. Not touching the, the beaver tail. We're going to make sure that that safety, that beaver tail safety is working just fine. So with the grip safety working, now we're going to go ahead and disable the grip safety by gripping the gun. And we're going to pull the trigger again. And I'm going to put my thumb right here to make sure. It, there we go. You can see that the hammer dropped. And that gun is now functioning the way it should. So a very simple mechanism, easy to field strip. Uh, it's just a little bit more complicated than your Glock, but uh, uh, a lot of guns are. So really the only two extra parts that this gun has is a barrel bushing and the recoil spring cap. Not a very difficult mechanism to get to know. And when you get to know it, you know, you start to take pleasure in it. You, you, you understand uh, the simplicity, you understand uh, the unique functions of the mechanics, and then it's fun to take it apart and clean it. And that's something that a 1911 owner really likes to do. Once you've, once you've done that, you, know, you can wipe it down, clean it however you want to clean it. Now, when you disassemble the 1911 and you're taking those parts out to clean. Take time to examine it to make sure everything on there is okay. And if everything's good to go, you reassemble it nice and clean and re-lubed. Uh, it's just a joy and a, a great satisfaction to own a fine 1911. And again, this guy here has been with me for a long number of years and has shot more rounds than I care to think about. It's been a great companion for me, and I still do not know what this gun looks like jammed. So, a very reliable gun when it's been maintained. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, it's maintenance intensive. Well, yeah, so is an AR-15, but we give the AR-15 a pass, because with the AR-15, we've come to understand the mechanics of it and how the parts function with each other, so we can take it apart and maintain it easily because we're familiar with it. The 1911 is the same way. Once you get familiar with it, it is easy to maintain. And like an AR-15, it likes to run well lubricated, so you need to use some gun oil on it. Unlike a Glock, which thrives on neglect, and that's fine for a Glock, but you know, a Glock doesn't give you that sense of pride of ownership like a good 1911 does. Now you can see this old Springfield has had a couple modifications to it. Uh, a new beaver tail grip safety, a commander size uh, style hammer, uh, and uh, some trigger parts. But uh, you know you can modify it and really make it your own. I've replaced the wood grips with some grips from Ergo Grip uh, to enhance the way uh, it feels and the way I interface with the gun. So there's a lot of things that you can do with the 1911, uh, just like you can do with the Glock and a lot of other pistols. So uh, this gun being old, outdated, ancient, outdated, um, and obsolete, it's just not true. These guns are workhorses and will work for a very long time if you keep it maintained. So that's some of the fun of uh, having a 1911, is that maintenance. It is being able to take care of it. And uh, one of these days maybe we should have a class on getting into the guts of the 1911 because that's fun too. All right. Well, thanks for joining me today and hope you learned something. Talk to you guys later.